Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Elder Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. I want to say God bless you to uh, each and every one of you that are viewing the broadcast on today. We have a great uh, subject matter that we're going to talk on today, and we want to encourage the people of God to, amen, continue to be watchful in these last and evil days. And so we want to uh, say to each and every one, we hope that you uh, enjoyed your weekend. Uh, we hope that your church service uh, was a wonderful service and that uh, that you received the word of the Lord and all that God has had uh, to speak concerning uh, the the prosperity of your life concerning the spiritual things. When I say prosperity, I'm speaking of the spiritual increase that God desire for all of his people to have in these last and evil days. And so we hope uh, that uh, the word of God on Sunday morning that was preached by our leaders were effective and benefited you uh, that will cause you to go farther and to be strengthened in Jesus Christ. And so uh, with that being said, we want to go off into our prayer. And the first thing we want to do is we want to honor the Lord. We want to give honor to God who's the head of our life. We want to honor our honorable pastor, Bishop Dr. Ellis Murchison, senior of the Pentecostal Power Church and our first lady, Lady Paulette Murchison and to the entire uh, Pentecostal Power Milwaukee Church, and to my own lovely wife, Missionary Janice Newson. Uh, we thank and praise God for her and uh, for what God is doing for us. I uh, just want to say to the people of God that um, we had a great service on Sunday. Uh, our pastor uh, uh, really, really preached under the anointing. If you desire uh, to uh, see the service, you can go to our YouTube channel, PPC Milwaukee. You can go to YouTube and just search for PPC Milwaukee and look up uh, Sunday's date for this past Sunday. All right. Which would be 829-21. And you'll be able to see the service. Just search PPC Milwaukee and you'll find it. All right. But we want to go into our study. Uh, we want to acknowledge the Lord in prayer. Uh, we want to definitely give honor to our presiding bishop, uh, Bishop uh, Dr. Charles Bennett and Lady Bennett, and to our our assisting presiding bishop, Bishop Charles H. Webb, and their wives, amen, Mother Webb, amen, and the saints there in the city of St. Louis. Uh, we definitely want to uh, just honor all the executive council board of bishops and to our senior bishop, Bishop Floyd Scott, uh, we want to say praise the Lord and salute uh, Bishop Scott um, just for what God is doing in his life. And we know that as we uh, get older, uh, we battle certain circumstances. And so we're praying for our senior bishop that God will continually uh, let his face shine upon him and continue to strengthen and encourage his heart. All right. So let us get into uh, prayer. We want to go before the Lord in prayer. There are several that need prayer. Let us continue to pray for our uh, men in uniform, our men and women in uniform. Let us pray uh, that God will continue to keep them safe as they extract uh, their own uh, military personnel, as well as some of the Afghanistan people that have helped them in that crisis situation. Let us remember that there is a Hurricane Ida that is really wreaking havoc on the uh, southern border of the Gulf, uh, which is down in, uh, I would just say, Louisiana, Biloxi, and uh, the south area of the Gulf. Let us pray for all of those people there that are experiencing uh, calamity, that the Lord would just spare and preserve life, even though uh, there is a storm coming their way. And so we want to pray for those people. Let us pray for the souls that are on the altar tearing for the Holy Ghost, that God will fill them. Let us pray for our young people here in Milwaukee. Uh, let us pray for all of our mothers and our deacons. Pray for our deacon Tony and uh, let us pray for Evangelist Lee and all of the prayer warriors. Amen. That gets on prayer on Tuesday and Thursday. And we're soliciting all of you that can to join us in prayer on Friday. We be on our touch and agree prayer hour. And we're not asking you to stay the whole time because we understand that people work and they have other responsibilities. But if you can take a few moments 
to join us on the broadcast. We'll be starting at 12 noon. We ask that you would join us. That's our prayer request for you, that you would join us in prayer, that we would touch and agree, and that the people of God will have a platform that we all can come together, regardless of where you are, regardless of what ministry you're under. We need the saints to pray and we need all believers to join us. So it doesn't matter. We want you to join in with us, even if you can't only do it, but 10 minutes or 15 minutes. We're on for at least half an hour to an hour. And we know that can be lengthy. But whatever time that you would have to touch and agree, I believe God will honor uh, your petition. And I believe he will honor the desire and the will that you have just to come together as a body of believers to pray that we can uh, be strengthened and that we can encourage one another as we go down through these trying times. Okay. And so that's my request today. We're going to go into prayer and we're definitely praying for souls. Amen. Pray for the bereaved family. Uh, let us pray for the Bruce Sard banks and also the Howard family, as well as the Jesus soul saving traveling mission. Let us continue to pray for Bishop and mother Wallace. Let us pray for the Murchison family, Mother Johnson. Let us continue to pray that God will continue to strengthen and encourage their family. Let us pray for the Harvey family, as well as uh, uh, the Evangelist Lee and her family and all the prayers and those that are connected to that family. Let us continue to pray that God will take the people of God through. Amen. And even those requests that we have not received, uh, you can submit your request uh, via social media. Or you can text it to me. My number is 414-628-0568. And we will honor that request and we will state it. Or we would uh, just honor it uh, in private. However you desire, you can acknowledge if you want it just privately uh, acknowledge. We can do that as well. We want to respect everyone that have a request. So please join us. Please submit your request. And we want to make sure we bombard heaven on your behalf. All right. And we know that we serve a God that answers prayer. All right. And you can see that according to Isaiah 59, one and two, you can see that God hears his people. All right. And so we're going to get ready to go uh, into the word of Lord. But let us pray at this time uh, for the different things. And let us remember all of our leaders in prayer. Okay. Eternal God, our savior, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come. Again, before thy throne of grace and before thee, O God, we thank you today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would touch, O God, in the name of Jesus, O God, those, O God, that are going through right now, touch in a special way, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, Lord, as we give you thanks and we give you praise, Lord, we ask you on our petition at this hour, Lord, we ask if there be any sin, Oh, God, in the lives of those that we're praying for and our own life, if we stand as a representative, oh, God, interceding, forgive us now, Lord, as we forgive those that trespass against us, oh, God, and even those that despitefully, oh, God, come against us. We forgive the sin, Lord. Help them to come into the knowledge of who you are, that they may be saved. And Father, we thank you. We forever give you praise. Look on our family. Look on our children. Look on our Oh, God, church family, look on, oh, God, those, oh, God, that you're calling to be saved. We pray now, oh, God, that you would, oh, God, open up their understanding that they will have opportunity to be saved. And Father, we thank you. We forever give you glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. So we're going to get ready to go right into the word of the Lord. We're going to uh, be very quick today uh, to exhort you and we're going to pick it up for the rest of the week. Um, we're going to be uh, pretty brief today. Uh, Wednesday, we may be a little lengthy uh, and uh, we just want to uh, touch these scriptures uh, that we have for you today. We're going to go to uh, First Thessalonians chapter four. All right. So turn with us to uh, First Thessalonians chapter four. That's where we want to go. And we're going to get that scripture real quick. And we want to um, want to take a look at it. All right, so let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. All right, and we're going to start at about verse number 7. All right, all right. 1 
right, so let us read it. It says, for God had not called us unto uncleanliness. Hmm? Or for God has not called us to uncleanness. All right, you see that? For God had not called us to uncleanness, hmm? but unto holiness. All right. We want to take a look at this. And we're going to be talking about today, our subject. For those of you that just came on with us, uh, we're going to be talking about watchfulness for the Lord. All right. We got to be watchful, praise God, watchfulness for the Lord, all right? And so, uh, you know, the word of God got us covered that we need to be watchful um, for the Lord. I just want to uh, just, wanna, uh, just uh, let you take a look at a few things that we have for you, all right? So let's look. He had not called us uh, to uncleanness, but unto holiness. And he says here, he therefore that despise, despise it, despise it not man, but God who had also given unto us his Holy Spirit. And so there's people uh, that are going to dislike you. There are people that are going to come against you. There are people that's going to not understand you. Um, and we must be watchful for these different spirits. Even in the church, we got to be watchful for these different spirits because uh, God has called us to holiness. And when you see someone not walking according to uh, the Holy Writ, God's scripture, God's word, God's holy commandments, we can see that the Bible says men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And so anytime you're trying to tell a person what's right, I experienced this. <laughs> I'm telling you, I experienced this for myself. When, whether it don't matter if they're saint, doesn't matter if they're a sinner. And what I mean is if they claim to be saved, because you ain't no saint if you ain't doing right, if you ain't living right. Hmm? But I just want to make sure I make it uh, plain and precise that people have labels on them that they represent God, but the actions uh, portray otherwise. And so what I'm saying you may be going to a church. You may be involved in a ministry. You may call yourself even being a good preacher or teacher. But if you can't live what you preach and teach about, your preaching and your living is in vain. I just want to make sure I make it plain today. So this is where we're going. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. And he says, he therefore that despise it. You got people, they despise you because you're striving to live for God. And it's not you that's keeping yourself. It's God that's keeping you. And sometimes people get it mixed up and they despise you and, and, and despise your life because, you know, God has straightened you out. And I'm just going to put it this way. In my own words, God has straightened you out. And now you try to with the love of God, try to help straighten them out. And they don't want to be straightened out because they want to still live for the devil. Let me, oh Lord, let me get out of here. They want to still live for the devil. And so they don't want to hear what you're saying. Praise God. And that's okay. But remember that they don't despise you. They despise the God that's in you. And this is why I feel, um, I feel released in my spirit, even dealing with family folk, people in the church, people everywhere. I feel I feel encouraged and I feel released in my spirit. If you don't want to live for God, then don't hinder me. Praise the Lord. And that's where I'm at with it. If you don't want to live for Jesus Christ, don't hinder me. Praise the Lord. And I'm not mad with you. Praise the Lord. 
That's between you and your God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. But we want you to be saved. We want to let you know we want you to be saved and we're concerned about your soul. But if you're not concerned about your soul, we're going to pray for you. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to pray for you and leave you in the hands of a just God. All right. Let us go to the next scripture. I'm not done with Thessalonians at all. We're going to take the rest of the week to finish it. But I need to go to the next scripture and then we're going to go back to First Thessalonians. Please turn your Bible to uh, we want to go to uh, Matthew uh, chapter uh, 24 and 36. Hmm? And then we want to go to John 6 and 44. All right. Let me let me uh, we're going to go to St. John 6 and 44. But we want to go to uh, Matthew 24 and 36. Matthew 24 and 36 says, but the day and the hour. But the but that day and hour. But of that day and hour, no man know it, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. This is what he says. Nobody knows the day or the hour. All right. And we're going to go to Mark 13 and 32 and Mark 13 and 32. We're going to read it for you here. You can write down the scripture. We just read it for you because we don't have a lot of time. We just exhorting you. Mark 13 and 32. He says, but of that day and that hour, no man know it. He says the same thing. He says, not the angel, which are in heaven, neither the son, but the father. All right. That's what he says here. And so no man know the day or the hour when the son of man shall appear. Okay. Now let us take a look at another thing. Let us go to John 6 and 44, St. John 6 and 44. And then we're going back to first Thessalonians, St. John 6 and 44. It says here, no man can come to me except the father, which had sent me, uh, draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. So it's very important that we look at verse number eight and it says he I'm in first Thessalonians four and eight. Now he, therefore that despise it, despise not man, but God. So we got to stop taking these uh, satanic and these demonic attacks. We need to stop taking them personal and know that the devil is trying to attack the God that's in you because if he can attack and overthrow the God that's in you, he can overthrow you. And this is why the scripture says, except he bind the strong man. Hmm? And the strong man got to be the greater that's in you because the scripture said greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. And so if he can bind what God has placed and invested in you, and cause you to count that as nothing and oh lord and you lose faith toward god and fall into these oh lord fall into these low places where the enemy can oh lord defile you uh cause you not to serve god and also make you fall from your steadfastness this is what the enemy really wants us to do the enemy wants the saints to go back into the world and be fighting and, and, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. And you know what? It's more easy for me to just forgive it and let it go than to be fighting with you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord, let me get out of here. I got to go. It's, 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 I found it much more easier for me to forgive it and let you go than to be fighting with you and wind up in jail or in hell somewhere. Praise the Lord. It's much easier. And we got to practice these things because otherwise we will find ourselves back on the altar again, repenting and saying, God, I'm sorry. Going to the person saying, I'm sorry for doing and saying such things that we should not have done in the first place because God has not called us to uncleanliness. He has not called us to uncleanness, but to holiness. And so that means my lifestyle must represent who, amen, I represent. And if we're ambassador for Christ, 
we got to not only represent him in how we dress and come to church and portray that we save and holy, but we must act. We must behave in a manner as such where they said in Antioch that they called, they first was called Christians at Antioch because they were Christ-like. They had Christ-like behavior. And that's what we need. We need Christ-like behavior and conduct in these last and evil days. And so let me get in here. We're going to go a little bit farther here. And we want to go a little bit deeper into this because sometimes, uh, uh, how can I say this? Sometimes we don't take it serious, you know, the things uh, that God has laid out for the believer. And we need to take these things serious. He says, he says, now, he therefore that despised, despised not man, but God who had given us also unto us, who had also uh, given unto us his Holy Spirit. And so you have to remember, you have to remind yourself when you want to walk in your flesh, you got to remind yourself that you can't behave like other people behave. And sometimes it, uh, it requires us to restrain ourselves. And we got to be constrained to love and we got to talk to ourselves and tell us, you remember you say, praise God. And if you don't remember, you say you need to get back on the altar and let God remind you because we can wind up in some places that we should not. And I tell people all the time that we shouldn't play with our salvation. We shouldn't play with this word I'm saved because people can backslide in a moment's notice if they don't be careful and take heed. Uh, to the word of God. And so God is not going to throw you down the ground and tell you, uh, you know, uh, make you not do it, but he's going to warn us uh, before we get into situation. Now let us take a look here. He says here, but as touching brotherly love, uh, ye need not that I write unto you for, you know, yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Hmm. Now, this is where we got to be watchful, you know, because we go to the, we go and service our cars. We go and service our lawn equipment. We go and service things that need maintenance. We must be reminded that your spiritual man needs maintenance. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I can see I'm not going to get through with this. Your spiritual man needs maintenance. I know you're going to probably say, what kind of man does it need? We need to be tuned up with the word of God. Praise God, because we forget the Bible say the letter kill it, but the spirit give life. And sometimes we forget. Hmm? And we have to go back in our Bibles and read these scriptures and go back through them to remind ourselves that we've been called to holiness. Praise the Lord. And this is why you got people walking in the form, but not the power thereof, because they have stopped applying the word of God to their lives. Praise God. And if you stop putting oil in your car, you change the oil and you forget to replace the oil in there. This is what happened. People get baptized in water in Jesus name. They get the Holy Ghost. They receive the word. Then they stop coming to church. They stop listening to the preaching. They stop receiving the teaching. Sooner or later, your motor going to lock up. If you forget and leave the oil plug out the car, you change the oil, take the old oil out. You got the new oil sitting there on the bench and you got the plug out and you got the oil filter off. You put the oil filter back on, but you don't put the plug back in. Praise the Lord. And you pull the oil in the car, the new oil in the car and the oil run back out on the ground. This is what happened to Saint spiritually. When they let the word, oh Lord, when they don't let the word, oh Lord, be deposited in their spirit. And they let the oil go right back out on the ground and they fire up the engine and they shout for a little while, you know, and they, they, they accelerate for a little while. And then when they start, when the test and the pressures of life come, then the motor began to seize up. I'm talking about your spiritual motor. Praise the Lord. And then when your spiritual motor lock up, praise God, then you side the road and then you become like these. Oh, Lord, you become like these virgins in Matthew 25. You begin to tell much you need some more oil, but the oil ain't going to help the motor now because it's locked up. 
<laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to make it plain to you. Your motor and locked up if you fighting and acting a fool. Praise God. Hmm? Your motor then locked up. Your spiritual motor is locked. And now God got to put, oh, Lord, he got to do it. He got to tear that motor down. According to, oh, Lord, Jeremiah 7, 7, Jeremiah 18, 17, and 18. He got to tear that motor down. Hmm? Got to tear it down and rebuild it. And so that's where we at. Well, some of us need to be rebuilt. Look at this. And that's not, that's not a bad thing. But I want to let you know, we, uh, oh, we need to be rebuilt. If our love is not toward one another, he said, you've been taught of God to love one another. Hmm? So that's what we need to do. We need to love when ain't no love coming back. He says, and indeed ye do it toward all brethren, which are in all Macedonia. He said, all brother that's in all churches. <laughs> I'm going to make it plain for you. He said, all Macedonia, this is Paul exhorting them, Thessalonians, in that area. But I'm letting you know, you got to love everybody in all churches and people that ain't in church, you got to love them. Praise the Lord. Look at this. He said, but we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Oh, Lord. We talked about going to the next level. <laughs> oh, Lord. He said, Paul said here, he says here, brethren, uh, I, but we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Praise God. I want to see the brothers increase. Hmm? I'm talking about on a national level. I'm talking about concerning our organization on a national level. I want to see every brother increase. Praise God. Not just my church. <laughs> oh, let me get out of here. Oh, Lord. Not just the brethren in my church, but I want to see every brother in the body of Christ increase. Because when they increase, that means I'm going to increase along with them. Praise the Lord. Oh, let me get out of here. I got to go. And so my, my heart and my desire is that the brethren would increase. Look at this. Paul said that as well. And then he adds to this. He says, and that you study to be quiet and do your own business mm. and to work with your own hands as we commanded you that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without that ye may have lack of nothing. Look at this. He said he wants you to walk honestly. Hmm. Our responsibility is to live as a Christian regardless to how people treat us, regardless of what they say and do to us. We have a responsibility to live holy in all areas of our life. Even when they make us mad. I know, I know I'm messing up. And you can hardly be uh, effective in sharing your faith with others. If they don't respect you. Hmm? But whatever you do, do it faithfully and be a positive force in society. So even when folks don't like you, hmm? even when folks don't respect you, you know, you think people should respect you, but I learned, you know, respect is earned, but I learned some folks just ain't gonna respect you because you love God. And you know what? If they don't respect you, you still got to live for God. Hmm? The pastor cannot fold his church up because half the members don't like him. Praise the Lord. The pastor can't stop preaching this because folks don't, you know, want to do what's right. He got to still do what God said. And so, saints, we got to get thick skin in these last days. Hmm? We can't pack up and go home because everything don't go the way we think it should go. I know. I know I'm messing up today, but we got to get on down through here. But it's very important that we be watchful for the Lord because the enemy want to get us caught up and looking at everything but Jesus is coming back. And I want to let you know, Jesus is coming back. We're talking about Jesus Christ. And the Bible says he's coming back for a church 
that's without spot, blemish or wrinkle or any such thing. And so we want to encourage the people of God to stay with God mm, and be true to God. Praise God. And you can't be true to God if you're not going to be true to yourself. Mm. I tell anybody and I'll tell everybody, you know, when your flesh is rising up, praise God. Oh, glory. But you got to be able to kill it and know that you got to walk honestly toward them, which are without that. They may have be that, that you may have lack of nothing. Hmm? Cause God going to supply your need. And it's very, very important that we do these things, but I want to say, uh, <clears throat> we got to control our own body in a holy way. This is what we need to teach. Not only, uh, the, the sisters, but we need to teach our brethren hmm? that we, uh, need to know how to control our body in a holy way. Praise God. And these young brothers, I just want to say it. These young brothers need teaching. Hmm? And we know some of them, they want a wife. We know some of them, they want to get married, but we were not called to uncleanness, but we were called to holiness. And when you want to get married, uh, Oh Lord, I can, Oh Lord have mercy. When you want to get married, uh, you have to know where you are. Praise God. And I want to let you know that a lot of problems that we're having in the church is not a spiritual problem. Hmm? As a result, it's a, it's a spiritual deprivement, but really it's a lot of fleshism. Really, it's a flesh problem. Praise God. The biggest problem we have is getting flesh under control. Praise God. Hmm? When we can uh, bring this flesh into subjection, the spirit can really guide and take uh, full control and take us to levels that we never thought we could get to. But the biggest problem we have is we're not watching for ourselves. We're watching for everybody. Hmm? Some people, they watching for the devil, but they don't, they ain't watching for they self. They don't realize the devil is sitting right in their lap. I know. I know I'm messing up. The devil's sitting right in your lap because every time he tell you to do something, you obey what he say do. And you got to realize you got to yield your body as servants unto righteousness because who you yield your members to, that's who you become servants of. And if you find yourself, oh, Lord, always gravitating to fleshly things. <laughs> oh, let me get out of here. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You got to examine that thing. If you feel yourself gravitating to things that's not called of holiness, then you already know what the fruit of it is. Let me get on out of here. I want, I, I want to go here. You know, um, these desires that we have, they must be placed under Christ control. And how do you get placed under Christ control? That means we must do what the Bible says. Hmm? Huh? The Bible says to avoid, uh, to avoid fornication. Hmm? Let every man have his own wife. Hmm? So this guy, this is how Christ get control. Now we have a way. The Bible said there is a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end there are the ways of death. Hmm? You keep doing it your way. You're going to have a baby out of wedlock. Hmm? I'm telling you the way it is. And the Bible says, can a man take hot coals of fire and put it in the bosom and not be burned? Hmm? Can't do it. So I want to let you know, you got to put this thing under God's control. Hmm? And you know that uh, we teach sobriety. Hmm? We teach abstinence. Oh, I know. I know. I know. That's, that's, uh, some people say, oh, that's old folk. That's old. That's old teaching. That's antiquated and outdated. But this is why we got so many bastards in the church. 
babies and children and families that don't have fathers. Hmm? Because you just feel like doing something and then you have a child and you're not committed to that family and then you see somebody else you like and now you made another family. Now you got three families and oh Lord, and you ain't taking care of none of them. Let me get out of here. I got to go. This is why we teach you to avoid this stuff. Hmm? And sexual experience must be limited to marriage. To avoid hurting ourselves and hurting the innocent sisters that's in our churches. I just got to tell you the way it is. We got to be watchful saints. Hmm? And, oh, and there's no playboys in holiness. <laughs> Oh, Lord, let me get out of here. And there's no playgirls either. But let me get on out of here. We must get this under control. Hmm? And we must be um, uh, faithful to God and to our fellow brothers and sisters hmm? in a way that does not... Uh, defame Christ. And a lot of times we, we have uh, the name, but we defame it by not doing what God required for us to do. He said, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. Hmm? And he said, not every person or every man that says, Lord, Lord, going to enter into the heaven, not going to go. But I want to say this to you. He says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. He goes further here. After he goes down this discourse of what the requirement is to live for God and to please God. He makes a point here in 13. He says, but. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Hmm? So apparently there were some people back in Paul's day that didn't have hope in the resurrection. Hmm? And we have people that we walk past every day today that we work with on our jobs that we work with in our communities that we see as we pass by in the grocery store in the parking lot, you will be surprised at the people that don't have hope. Hmm? And you know what? It's very important since we have this hope and the Bible said, for we have these treasures in earthen vessels that the excellency of the, uh, may be a, uh, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us, that the excellency of, of the power may be of God and not of us. Don't you know we need to tell someone about Jesus Christ and about the coming of the Lord. The Lord is soon to come. And it's time to get your house in order. Praise the Lord. And we need to do it in a loving way. Look at this. He said, even as others which have no hope, he says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Hmm? So if we live right, hmm, heaven belongs to us. Even if we have to leave here and we live in right, heaven belongs to the people of God. Praise God. When we're walking the way and living the way we're supposed to live. Hmm? Look at this. He said, for I say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Hmm? He talks about God coming back. He talks about the rapture, the catching away of the church. Saints, we need to be watchful. The Lord is soon to come. Don't let no man take your crown. Don't let nobody steal your crown. Because you getting upset over it in a moment's notice. Uh, you not want to forgive them 
because they did you wrong hmm? and you not want to let it go. Guess what? You blocking your own. Oh, Lord. You blocking your own. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. You blocking your own opportunity to check out of here. Hmm? And I want to let you know, I don't want to be stuck down here hmm? when the rapture take place. Hmm? I don't want to be stuck here dealing with some of the problems that's going to be on this earth. Praise the Lord. And so it behooves us saints to let it go. Hmm? I know they got that frozen uh, song, let it go, let it go. You need to let it go. Praise God. Hmm? And sometimes we just won't let things go. But I've learned to let it go and put it in God's hand. He can he can handle a lot better than I can. Hmm? And I know uh, some of the saints sing, and I think Evangelist Lee sing it. I don't know why I keep coming up with these songs, but when I'm teaching, it comes to my mind. Um, Evangelist Lee sing a song said, leave it alone. God can handle it much better than you can. Just leave it alone. And so I'm learning to leave it alone. Praise God. Because there ain't nothing I can do with it. Because I feel like if I don't leave it alone, <laughs> oh, Lord, let me get out of here. If I, don't, if I don't leave it alone like I'm supposed to, I'm going to wind up in trouble. And so I'm, I'm learning to just leave it alone. Praise God. Look at this. He says here in verse number 16, I want to encourage you as I get ready to get out of here. He says, for the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Don't you want to meet the Lord in the air? Hmm. He gives us a clear description of what's going to transpire here, knowing that the dead will be raised hmm? in relation to the other events, the second coming. Hmm? And we need to realize this, it, you know, oh, Lord, have mercy. It says here in relation to the other events at the second coming, it's not as important to knowing why Paul wrote these words to challenge believers to comfort and encourage one another when loved ones die. And I want to encourage somebody that lost a loved one uh, in the Lord, that this is not the end. This is just the beginning of a transition from earth to heaven, because the Bible says, uh, and why they sleep, the Bible let us know that, you know, uh, when they go to sleep, they sleeping in the Lord. Hmm? But the Bible said to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And so even though the body may have to go, we know that when this transformation takes place, when this rapture takes place, huh? when this second coming takes place, we have to look at this as God is going to get the righteous whether they be in the grave or whether they be alive and remain, we're going to be caught up with the coming of the Lord and the clouds in the air. And we're all going to get there together at the same time. The church is not going to prevent them that are asleep and them that are asleep is not going to prevent the church. We're all going together. Praise God. You see how God got this thing mapped out. And as I get ready to get out of here, I want to exhort you, um, uh, uh, that you would have comfort in knowing that God is coming back. Hmm? I want to give you comfort and consolation today to let you know that the Lord is coming back. Praise God. And it's very important that you hold on, that you let no man take or steal your crown and that you live toward God. And that you do everything that you can to stay with the Lord. Praise God. And I believe God will come, will keep that which is committed unto him. He will keep that which is committed unto him. And if you commit your life to God, God will keep you. Because by, but by the scripture, Jude said unto him that is able. 
I want to let you know, my friend, glory, that God is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his, of his glory. Praise God. Look at this. He says, remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. There is a resurrection. Don't let nobody tell you. Don't let no devil tell you. And you know, there is a resurrection. And so for those of you that may be diagnosed with terminal illnesses, there is hope for you. There is a resurrection. And don't let people say, oh, well, there's no hope. Ain't no use in me serving God. I got to die. Dying ain't the, oh, Lord. Dying is not the worst thing that can happen to a believer. But dying without God is disaster. Praise God. And I want to encourage you to let you know that God is coming back and he's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. Will you hear that trumpet sound? Oh, glory be to God. And the dead in Christ. It says dead in Christ. Praise God. Hmm? He says they going to rise first. That means they're going to get up. They ain't going in the air first. They're going to get up out the grave. Praise God. And then we, talking about the church of the living God and those that's living on this earth for God in righteousness and true holiness. Hmm? And those that's walking, that made their garments clean and been washed in the blood of the lamb. Look at this. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. What them? Them that got up first. Praise God. In the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever. Oh, glory be to God. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, glory. Because Jesus, oh, Lord. Because Jesus got up out the grave. Hmm? So will all believers get up out the grave. <laughs> Let me get up out of here. All Christians, including those living when he returned, will live with Jesus forever. Don't you want to go where Jesus is? We're going to live with him forever. And we need not despair when loved ones leave here. When they die, a tragic thing takes place. God will turn your tragedy into triumph. <laughs> Glory. Oh, hallelujah. God's going to turn your tragedy into triumph. Let me get out of here. Glory. And look at this. Poverty to riches, pain to glory. And your defeat to victory. Lord have mercy. I got to get out of here. Oh, I just want to say. God is a very present help in the time of need. And the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Hmm? The promise of the resurrection. Hmm? The Thessalonians had to grab hold to faith. And so do we. And we got to be comforted and reassured one another with this great hope. I want to comfort and reassure you that it's not over until God says it's over. And so these are the words from uh, Brother Newsom uh, with the Faith in God Internet TV. I'm your host, Elder Newsom, with the Faith in God Internet TV. Till next time, God bless you. We hope that we said something to encourage you. Uh, we want you to continue to broad uh, to be on the broadcast and uh, be on the broadcast, preferably uh, throughout the week. Uh, mainly, we want you to start joining us in the Friday Touch and Agree Prayer Hour. These are some areas when we talk about strengthening, uh, the Lord dealt with us on uh, strengthening uh, the believers. And the only way we can be strengthened saints is we need to read the word of God and believe the word of God. Walk in the word of God, meaning be doers of the word, not hearers only. 
And then we need to come together in prayer that we might uh, be strengthened one toward the other. All right. And we must have fellowship. And since this COVID is taking off and back again, and we're having some other issues, let us meet where we can meet and we can meet on the air. We can meet on the broadcast. We can meet on the prayer line. And these are still ways that we can be strengthened and without, uh, without violating someone's space. All right. And so let us be wise. Let us be watchful because the Lord is soon to come. All right. And we know that the Lord is coming back soon. All right. And so there's our words for today. Uh, we want to say God bless you, that we love you. And thanks again for joining us. Okay. Please stay tuned uh, for this week uh, broadcast coming on Wednesday at one o'clock. All right. God bless you in Jesus name. And we want you to stay.